Good morning, good morning. It is July the 12th, I believe. Oh, last night was our last night in Whitehorse. Uh, there have been so many changes of the plans, like, and so much different information coming in. Uh, so we separated this morning. Ted, he still wanted to do uh, Tuck. And I'm, my plan is to be down at my brother's, I said a few times, uh, the 23rd. So I've got nine days. And whatever I see, I've got to calculate the time getting back. You know, so from up here, four days probably you get down to Vancouver Island. So I've got five days of wanting to see something. And going north on the Klondike from Whitehorse uh, at kilometer 463, like Stewart Crossing and Pelly Crossing, they said they've got the fires all out. But there are still pilot cars taking people through, and there could be line, lineups are waiting. And the smoke hazard is up there. So I thought about uh, the heavy rain that's supposed to be up that way that Ted will hit today, uh, the possible wait for the pilot car, and then there's a big section uh, that's north of there coming into Dawson that's being heavily worked that that'll just turn to mud so the thought of that so it just when I laid it out the thought of fighting through the traffic fighting through the smoke fighting through the mud uh, and then to get there it's kind of you know three days in and sort of two days out all I'm gonna see is the same road that I saw last year and camps campgrounds and I've didn't come this far for that you know I just uh, so Ted went on the Klondike I'm on the Alaska Highway I'm heading uh, to the Alaska border and I'm I'm in the rain a little bit now but the chance where Ted was going was like 80 some percent rain this way as I get further west this is the junk coming from last night the severe weather storm with lightning and hail so this is the end of that and as I get closer into Toke it's 33 percent chance of rain and 22 degrees so I got a soldier on a little bit to get through some stuff and then uh, and I'm on pavement I'm on pavement all the time and as I get up through these little communities along here there's motels and that's what I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to Valdez, you know, when I get into Alaska. Toke, I'll probably stay at Toke. There's a place there called the Young's Motel. And then I might go up to Chicken, if, if weather is good. And then there's a place a little north of that called Eagle. So that, I came from the other side last year, Ted and I, up to the Alaska border. So on this side, I'll be up to the Canadian border and pick off all those little places. Then I'd come back down to Tote and then head southwest into uh, Valdez. And then I met a, another motorcyclist last night, and he said, take the little ferry across to Whittier, and then there's a four and a half kilometer tunnel that you can ride through that there's trains on one side, I guess, and trucks on the other, but vehicles down the center. So that's a naming mark. So what I'm interested in with the limited five or six days, like I could be a couple of days late down at my brother's. I think the ferry is too expensive. My idea on that is I'm trying to, I was trying to fit the ferry in at the end of this stuff, uh, which kind of makes it a little difficult. Uh, you know, the logistics and all the timings to do what I want to do and then get down to uh, Skagway and to Juneau, and it's $1,100 U.S., and then I think it's, you pick up BC Ferries in Prince Rupert, and that's 450 I think, to Port Hardy. So, it's you know, you're chewing up a couple thousand dollars to go down. So, I think that's a bit much on the end of this trip. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably ride back down and just take my time. Then, uh, 
another time when I come out, the ferries will be the first first part of the trip. So up to Port Hardy, ferry to Prince Rupert, and then Prince Rupert to Juneau, then Skagway. And then I'm up here, and I can ride through this stuff down around Valdez that I've done, like maybe stay for a little visit, but then move further up, uh, and if I want to, Prudhoe Bay. So it's just... There's, we've lost time with Ted Sprockets, the fires and all the other stuff and uh, have squeezed us. So what I'm interested in doing is going to these old motels, staying at the motels, drinking coffee, sitting around a fireplace, getting that vibe, going to a restaurant, having a beer and steak, and having five days of that in a small area. You know, I don't need to cover any more kilometers. Uh, I think I've done enough. So it's what I'm interested in now. Let me take my glasses off. It's getting hard to see. What I'm interested in now is getting somewhere like Valdez and Whittier and just hanging out. You know, that's that's all I really want to do. And then, you know, get four or five days of that. And then a nice meander back. And I don't know that I'll camp. I might just hotel it. You know, and, uh, and then get back to Vancouver Island and relax. So, you know, I wish Ted well for what he's coming up against. And I wish myself well for what I got to get through. But that's the story today, folks. Well, here we are out in the middle of nowhere at a stoplight. Uh, still raining a little bit, but not too bad. At about 100 kilometers, so 10 or 15 kilometers back, it turned to gravel. And it's it's hard packed. There's a little loose marbly stuff on the top, but it's only, you know, half inch, inch deep. And you can pick out the wheel track, so. But the good thing is there's a car behind me. You can see in the mirror. So if uh, anything was to go wrong, I can jump on the roof. <laughs> Think positive. Think positive. Mm. Oh, fun, oh, fun, oh, fun, oh, fun. I'm in the mud. In the mud, in the mud, raining and in the mud. Fifty kilometers to Haynes Junction. So, if it stays like this all day, then I will probably just stay in the Yukon side, right up close to the border, find something. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with the tires. That's what you always kind of, in this junk, where you got to cross those windrows, and then you got to plow through this mud. But usually what I find, when there's water like this on the road, it's that it's hard underneath. see on the other side where it's dry and it's it's a little softer it's doughier but this side's hard with a bit of water laying on it and the rumble strips but earlier in my plans I said I'm going to be on pavement all day you know when I come in the Alaska side so I don't know how long this goes
pretty good going, though. Burr, burr. Eight Celsius. Raining hard. My gloves. Wrong gloves, wrong gloves. The other ones are packed away. It is cold. But I see a little break. I see a little silhouette, the silhouette. Give me warmth, give me warmth. Please give me warmth. There, rain's backed off a little bit. Oh, I'm tired. It's one of the great big, soft, warm bed. Somewhere down the road, I'll find it. Man, oh man, oh man. I am wet. And I am cold. Coming into uh, Destruction Bay. A lot of road work up here. And a lot of firefighters uh, in town. Towns, I guess. Villages. So that could be an issue. Getting a place to stay. And it's not that I didn't want to... you know set up uh, the tent if I had to, but it's to get my clothes dry. Oh, we motor on, we motor on. Stop back in uh, Haynes Junction. Try to suit up a little better. Talk to a young girl at the gas bar. April, her name was a great hot coffee and two beautiful hot muffins, a blueberry and uh, a banana and they were hot Oh, put the life back in me and it was hot inside the, the little, you know, northern kind of convenience store probably 25 feet long by 10 feet wide but clean and neat very, very nice girl to talk to. She moved up here January from the Okanagan area. Just love, you know, getting to know these little stories. And can't seem to get my screen clean. Destruction Bay Visitor Center. I go in there, but I'd probably never get out. Seven degrees right now, the wind, and I'm wet. So it's just sheer determination now to get on the other side of whatever it is. Watch for wildlife, drive with caution. Yeah. Hardy souls to be out in this. Collision area, goats. Let's see if we can see a goat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It is cold. What a place this would be if it was sunny in about 20 degrees.
lot of places like to stop and take a picture, but not today.